Hey guys, Kenny Duncan Jr. back with the Coin Shop Podcast alongside my brother Matthew Duncan and a special guest today, Michael Garfield, the high tech Texan. A lot of you know him if you're from Houston, I've been in Houston for an extended period of time. It's kind of hard not to know Michael's name. Um, Michael, thanks for being on the show. Are you kidding me? It's about time you've had me, people. I love this. I, I've come here for years. I drive by. I listen and watch your podcast, and I finally get invited to the big show. This is awesome. I appreciate it, boys. We are we are uh, we're pretty amped up. I don't know if I'm as amped up as. Let me say that thing. Right there. What is this thing? This is yes. Yeah. I don't need a lot of caffeine. I'm. I'm just I was gonna say, thing. there's no way and, and you're I've, as amped up as he is with yeah. that. No. And I've never had a sip of coffee in my life. But I know I, some of these these, these monsters. Not mon this is called nerd focus. Oh, cool. Sadly, they're not an endorsement. This is a free endorsement, which I don't do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but this is one of those caffeinated stuff because uh, I needed to get uh, super amped up. Yeah, you I'm get with focused the in with the. It yeah. works. All right, exactly. just, uh, <laughs> stand by. Yeah, exactly. You know how many watts we have on this radio station? No doubt. <laughs> it's like we're all we're the Singapore now, right? Look Let's out, get baby. out there. I'm going. Let's go. So, um, man, your personality. So I met you. Um, well, actually, we met a few years ago. Um, I was on your show, actually. And, um, you know, so I, I think I told you, too. I remember being a younger, younger lad, you know, riding in the car and listening to the radio and hearing, you know, an ad by, you know, this is Michael Garfield, the high tech Texan, you know, talking about whatever it was you were talking about at the time. But did you did you have a chronicle? Were you in the Chronicle? I was not in the Chronicle. No, that, that's that's dinosaur newspaper stuff. I know. <laughs> this is how long I'm thinking back, though. No, uh, I was I was I, I was the subject of some you know nice columns from Ken Hoffman or whatever the hell. But I, yeah, I, I there was I, definitely a column I read. Yeah, there's, there's sure. several columns, but of all the, the the things that I do in the media, I'm more of an electronic guy. TV and radio versus the print. I, I mean, obviously, I, I I studied that radio, television, and film. I know how to write write well. I write well. I don't write good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, right. But I don't. I I. It takes so much longer to sit there and write words. I would rather do it like like we're doing right now. Right. Yeah. Talking, smiling, showing things off on, on video. Right. Well, and that's, listen, that's how you build your brand, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you got to get out there. Like we were talking about it earlier. You got to get out there. You can't build your brand and, you know, be a recluse and hide in a closet. Like if you're going to build yourself or build, then you've got to get out there. You got to shake hands. You got to go to events. Um, you've got to be active. And a lot of people in the coin business, uh, the rare coin business, and similar to what we're doing, you know, with jewelry and things like that, I've always noticed that the guys do the guys that do really well are the ones that put themselves out there, right? And um, a lot of times, I feel like a lot of businesses die because they don't have good strategies of of putting themselves in front of the public eye and 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 inviting people into their business to actually, hey, listen, we're going to take care of you. This is my face. A lot of people in our business they hide kind of behind mm -hmm. it. They don't, and, and sometimes they have legit. Reasons yeah. for it, security, sure. you know, they're maybe yeah. they're a little bit quiet or they're not, um, you know, uh, they're not charismatic or they're not you know, as, as outgoing, but they're super smart with coins. But again, their business flails because I feel like their self-promotion is not that well. So one thing about you and I've gravitated towards you is that you can sell the shit out of yourself, right? <laughs> and, it's, and it's great because um, it's kind of hard not to be kind of attracted, not not physically. Come uh, on. Man. But you, you know what I mean? But it, it is kind of, you know, it's like, hey, okay, cool. I don't have to be, uh, I don't have to be the guy that talks. We got him. <laughs> right. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. And I, if I have to use it, and I'm a big analogy guy, because when I talk about technology stuff, you know, I try to keep it above the board. I don't use megabytes and gigabytes. That's just above everybody's pay grade. Yeah. Yep. As I said, I try to keep it sexy. It's just, let me give you an analogy. But what the analogy of how to build a brand and what you just said, it's about, you've got to create, it's about your personality. And even it's as, especially in what you guys do. Listen, it's, you know, U.S. coins and jewelry. Everybody knows it. The fact is, if you guys hid, it's just a big, it's, it's a brand. The fact is, people want to know they can trust Kenny and Matt. Kenny and Matt, you guys are out there and you smile. So my analogy is, it's a Jewish delicatessen. Now, let, let me explain. If you go to a Jewish delicatessen, almost any of them, go to New York, you go to the ones here in Houston, you know the deli man. He yeah. is out. He is schmoozing. He is shaking hands. You go there not so much for the great corned beef, the great pastrami. You go because the owner is always out there. He's always talking. And, and, and that's what you want to go for because he's your friend. He's, he's your buddy. So it's your name and it's your personality. In my case of the high tech Texan and Michael Garfield, I mean, my brand is me. I am my brand. It's, it, it's the whole thing. And I cannot be hiding behind a microphone. I am. I have to be out there. So when I created the brand of the high tech Texan, about what, 22 years ago that we're going on, 
I started on Channel 2 here locally. I was on Channel 2 in the morning, and I was just trying to explain what technology was what it, back in 2000 and 2001, which was a whole different scenario of what it is here. Yeah. I would then go out and uh, I would do, I, I, would, I would talk to uh, garden clubs. I would walk around and show them my Blackberry and, and, and how it works. Uh, people yeah. would ask me to speak to their, 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 their corporate sales team. You want to get out there and build a brand. And this is before social media. Yeah. This is, let's go yeah, back to you. Yeah, you were an influencer before there were influencers, yeah, right? Or the word. Yeah, it, actually, if you sum it up that right Pretty right. much, right? Yeah, the, the word influencer, as we know, the social influ influencer came around, um, what, what, probably 10, eight years ago or, or something. Uh, but the fact is, we're all influencers something. You know, maybe, you know, let's go back to school, man. Maybe your mom made the coolest sandwiches and when you, when you were in fifth grade. It's like, oh man, Kenny, man, I, I didn't know I loved turkey or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> but when I was on TV showing stuff off, you know, 20 years ago, it's like, oh, Michael, you know your stuff. Yeah. Well, what kind of phone do you have? Yeah. Uh, I have I have this, you know, BlackBerry. Type. I want that. And, yeah. and so it's an influencer. So, you know, it's, it's what cool. I still do. I get to play with a lot of cool stuff. And well, that's kind of my plays. Like, I'm like, okay, so like, you know, I'm a middle, I'm in my mid forties, you know, like I like cool things, but I, I don't keep up enough with stuff in modern technology these days to know all the cool shit that comes out. And I'd like a consolidated place to know, right? Um, you know, you're driving the Raptor R, and now you got the the shake. What do they call it? Shakedown? Yeah, it's, it's the challenge. It's challenge, Challenger, uh, cha uh, the Dodge Challenger Shakedown. Whew. But it's cars, yeah. So it, it's whether it's car. And I try to. I, I say this. I know uh, a little about a lot. I don't know a lot about a little. Yeah. I mean, in my job is yes, I started with technology. Sure, I can tell you everything you want to know about phones, about high definition TVs, about computers, about la laptops. But and now our kids know more than we do. Yeah. So I started about ten years ago, branching out into all consumer lifestyle, and that's where I got into cars and trucks. I'm a member of the Texas Auto Riders Association. I did it because I realized cars and trucks they're built on technology right now, and so I have the honor really now of on a weekly basis test driving some cool vehicle, not from a dealership, but literally from Michigan where they're, where they're where built on. I get to talk to the engineers and the marketers of how it breaks it down. So I'm your research guy. Right. And it's, it's nice to be that, I'm not going to say Mr. Know-it-all, but people will say, hey, listen, I need a phone. Garf, what do you got? Okay, I'm, now I'm looking for a, uh, I need an eight-seat SUV. You test them like that. It's, it's the whole thing. But everybody is their expert. And for example, it's it for you guys. I don't, I know very, very little about coins and, you know, a little about jewelry, but the fact is every time I come here, this is kind of an adorable, but it's really not, but, uh, but I'm still blowing sunshine up what you guys know. I've learned everything. I learned how to take a watch like a Rolex and which way to turn it when you, when you rest it. I didn't know things yeah. like that. The more you're around <laughs> experts, the more you pick up. And in my case, I'm very lucky. I've got a 5,000 watt radio station on KPRC 950. I've done it for 22 years right now. And so now I can broadcast the the, li the little technology that I know, but I, I bring it across in an easy to understand way, I think. Right. No, I think you do. And it's exciting. It's a, it's, it's a good show to listen to. Um, I would say that there are some stuff that I listen to on, and I, and I, uh, maybe I'm an old guy now, but I do listen to AM radio. I mean, you know, I do. I wish I was as old as you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Relax. Well, I mean, I, I just say, I guess in, in like where my mindset is, yeah. like, you know, it's like, I'm looking for information, right? And the information that I want to listen to is consolidated and I want to hear like the top of what's going on. I don't need to, I don't have time for the dregs. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. Right. So, um, it's a cool show. And um, I was excited to be a part of it a couple of years ago and even more excited that now you're a part of ours. I think, so. the, I think the thing is, and you figured it out. First of all, I love your setup. You guys, I mean, you know what you're doing. It's the new medium. You know, did you, when you started this years ago, your dad was here. It's like, you know, what was a podcast? What am yeah. I supposed to do? Yeah. No idea. You're reaching in a new audience right now and you're giving good information, but you're giving it with entertainment. And here's the thing. You don't put people to sleep. Yeah. I do. I do. A big part of my business model, if you will. I'm, I'm on stage a lot. I do a lot of MC types. I guarantee when I sign contracts, I will tell that organizers, I will never put anybody to sleep. You've yeah, got to yeah. be up there. you got to be fun. Entertainment. It, it's almost in sports right now. I mean, I love listening to sports, you know, radio shows, but they start peppering in, you know, entertainment, lifestyle, pop culture. And that's what right. I do too. I mean, if I sat there and did my high tech texting show going, well, you know, there's this new computer over here and it's got all this neat RAM. I mean, I can hear clicks of radio turning off right now. Yeah. So I use humor. I use the personality. I use analogies. And then three minutes later, I'm talking about, you know, the new song from Drake or something like that. It's just, I got to keep <laughs> it, generational, but I, I got to keep it fun. 
Yeah. And I guess with the platforms now, you get a broad range of listeners, right? It's not your normal, you know, AM. I guess you could characterize AM listeners into, you know, a very small, you know, cut of the pie. But now I'm sure it's it's, it's blown up. Right? Well, it's different because, again, 22 years ago, I, you know, listen, we're, we're, I'm part of iHeart Media. We have like a seven, eight radio stations. Streaming. terrestrial here right now. And, and the only reason, it, if people wanted to call in or talk to us, I mean, obviously it's the, hey, call 713-212-5950. They used to mail letters. If they had questions, I mean, that's it. Now there's email, but now they're streaming. And now there's the, there's not only podcasting, but uh, you can go to iHeart.com on the app and listen live, or you know, you can podcast the whole thing. That's a whole new audience. And not just here locally in, in H-Town, you know, I'm more than high tech Texan. I, I kid you not for 14 years, I've had a listener in Australia. They're 14 hours ahead. He found me online. He listens. And they used to Skype me and call me. The day, you know, 14 hours ahead. I'm like, dude, you're a day ahead. Who's winning the football game tomorrow? So it's like, <laughs> but the, but, but, but the medium right now, and this is different. When I went to college at UT and studied radio, television, and film, it was very localized. But now, I mean, right now, people are listening to us. They're not just, you know, within a 5, 10, 15 mile radius here of no. Houston, guys. They're around the world because they want to do stuff. And that's the neat thing how, of how, you know, the media has changed. And I'm just, you know, we're, I'm st- we're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Always. What got you? So like what, what, what clicked to you when you said, you know what, I'm going to go to UT. I'm going to get into this segment. I'm going to get into this, uh, into this business. What, what got you going? Well, uh, I'm not going to say I didn't have a choice of UT. I'm a uh, third generation UT. Grandfather was there in 1920. My dad was there back in the 60s. I went there well, my, and one of my three sons, they just graduated. Oh, so cool. I'm all lost. Really I'm cool. all yeah. orange. It's not even funny. So I, I'm a big honk there. But what got me into communication, it's when I grew up and, I, and uh, I'm from Dallas. The greatest city. I'm, I'm next time. <laughs> There's a lot of Dallas people listening right now. I know that because we're worldwide. So I grew up in Dallas and, uh, and let's just say the, the 1970s. And my, my dad worked, um, you know, just, you know, typical, you know, goes to a job from nine to five. Um, I grew up, um, loving and watching television and yes, it, it was, it was passed back black and white, but it was a lot of the reruns from Gilligan's Island and, and everything, but I was infatuated with television and I would come home from school. Uh, three o'clock, four o'clock. Though I didn't, I didn't do homework, and I hope my parents aren't listening to this, but they know by now. All I did was watch television. I watched TV from about three thirty until ten o'clock at night. I rarely went out and played. I, I didn't do anything. I loved the medium of television. Uh, a lot of sitcoms too. So it was fast. It was funny. And and the the point, uh, uh, one of the points that I can actually prove it. So my mom is from Austin. My dad from Beaumont. Texas accents. You yep. think I have a Texas accent. When you're 5 to 14 years old, you pick up all the surroundings of your family. You pick up everything. Generally, you have whatever accent. Like, even my younger sister has a Texas accent. I don't think I have any Texas accent. Do you know why? Because I learned to speak from watching television. And everybody on television talks fast. They're animated. Yep. They're quick at the fight. I literally learned life from TV, and that's something I always wanted to do. Then, I, you know, back in the day, this predates you guys, but there was a show called The Dick Van Dyke Show. He was a writer for television. So I got to see now behind the scenes of how TV shows and radio shows were actually done. Right. Dick Van Dyke, uh, Rob Petrie, if you like, great guy, nice family man. I'm like, I need to pattern myself off of that guy. And uh, Dick Van Dyke's still alive. He's still alive. He's in his night. I got to meet him a few years ago. He's, oh, nine. He, he, he's phenomenal, yeah. And then music comes in. And now I'm in high school. And what really got me in the radio, it's back in the day, there was a, there still is, Ryan Seacrest doesn't know it, but there's a very, very popular syndicated radio show. It was called American Top 40. Of course. The top 40 songs. Casey and Kasem. Casey Kasem was the guy, Okay. And I don't know if you ever remember what Casey Kasem looked like. I do. I look like Casey Kasem. Well, I mean, I think you're better looking. At Casey yeah, I, I like him. He's dead. Yeah. I never like, yeah. But I sound but like Casey. Let's do your best Casey Kasem. Oh, it's over. It's over. I'm, I'm I literally you. went to college. I learned with the high school because I wanted to be Casey Kasem. All right, here it is, guys. Casey <clears throat> Kasem. Here we come. Uh, I wish I could have the, uh, the the start of it. Guys. Uh, you just got to go off the top. Let's go. Hello again and welcome to American Top 40. My name is Casey Kasem coming up the top 40 most popular songs in America. But first, a long distance dedication. We have two boys who grew up in a coin and jewelry store and they inherited it. They didn't want to do it, but they took it all the way to the top. Coming up, here's King of Pain dedicated to U.S. coins and jewelry. Up next, keep your feet in the ground and keep reaching for the stars. (laughs) Dude, I was going to try to follow that up. I'm not going to anymore. So between those two things, I said, I got to be in RTF. And I was an RTF major. I was the only, I mean, every one of my friends are lawyers. Maybe there's a few doctors peppered in. And I'm the only idiot, quote unquote, 
who did this. So I never had that nine to five job where I had to, you know, work for 90 hours a week, like all my lawyer friends, they're all partners now and whatever, but I just yeah. wanted to do this and it's fun. This is the personality. So that's it. To answer your question, that was a long way about, but that's why I wanted to get into it because that was the passion, what I wanted to do as a kid. RTF radio, television, film. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's exactly. Yeah. Um, that Casey Kasem thing still has me going. Oh, it's, did, it's, uh, did you ever hear that? I haven't. Yeah. Really? No. So yeah. You've never been on a road trip like a, Oh, you probably do. You're probably asleep. Just as long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like one of those things like, I, you know, maybe it's just an era thing too. You know, I'm, I'm 10, I got 11 years on you. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge, widely popular show. It was, yeah, it was, it was every Friday night, every Saturday. And even when I was high school, I would sit there. It was a four hour show because they did 10 songs an hour for the top 40. And I would sit there with a yellow legal pad and I would write down every 40 song and then next Monday I would go into school and I would actually talk to all my friends in school I mean I was a loser I would just say these the, 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 the top songs and this was all in the 80s so this was the heyday of Michael Jackson and, 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 and you know the Duran Duran and everybody from England coming in yeah. but the thing is I have a very very incredible memory and I think I got the memory from memorizing everything he said um, I know the stupidest facts I know every record label I could tell you what number this peaked at what but to this day, this is 40 years ago, and it, it kept my mind, you know, young and fresh. Now that I have three boys, and my boys are now in the 20s, they grew up, you know, I'm listening into, into the car, and I listen to, to Sirius Satellite. I'm always on Channel 8, 8 on 80s. Even my kids now who are, they, they shouldn't even know any 80s. I mean, they're, they're listening to Hall and Oates, Sarah Smile, you know, went to number one, 1980. I mean, I'm so proud of my kids, actually, for, for listening to this. But I have to keep up with what's happening now because yep. I have another generation or two to listen to what I'm saying. So, you know, I mentioned, you know, Drake and the Taylor Swifts and type of thing. So I still have to keep up of what's hot now versus throwing a lot of the old, uh, you know, the 80s things back. When did you pivot from, okay, on the high tech Texan, you know, the, when the Blackberry comes out or the Nokia, that, remember that little James Bond, the, the silver slide? Absolutely. From, remember that I thing? I still have those in my garage. <laughs> what was that, like uh, 99, 2000, 2001? Do you remember that little Nokia slip yeah, phone? It was I like do the, remember the most famous phone, phone yeah. of all time. And I mean, it didn't do shit. No. <laughs> but, but answer and call but it out. It looked sexy. But it was yeah, cool. It was like, but yeah. sleek. It yeah, was small sleek and, and sleek. And, yeah. Um, I, I think that was like the first five hundred dollar phone. I remember a buddy of mine got it. It was like five hundred bucks. We're like, Whoa. "Oh, he's rich, you know, his parents yeah. must be." Young. And the Motorola Razor came out for one thousand dollars. I remember the Razor. Yeah, that yeah. thing was the smallest, slimmest, coolest thing ever. That so thing yeah. was cool. Dang, man. I love that Razor. That that was nice. I had one of those. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, but those I think, are... but I on the phones you talk about, I think it was uh, BlackBerry came out. Let's just say the the late nineteen nineties, and that thing was the precursor to, the, and. and if you ask me right now, the top two or top three in my lifetime, pieces of technology that has wowed me. And I'm jaded right now because I get to see all this stuff. But yeah. the BlackBerry still to this day, probably the neatest piece of technology I've ever because that allowed, I, I, I had mobile phones before. I had the bag phone back yeah. in the early 90s. Yeah, I'm really dating myself right now. But this thing was small, but it allowed you now to get your email. So you didn't have, you weren't tied to your office to get the email. And that obviously started and led to the Nokia's and obviously then Apple came in 2006, 2007 and changed the whole way the world works. But the BlackBerry still is, is way cool. But those are the things I used to, you know, talk about when I was starting on, you know, TV and channel two back 2001, 2002, a new phone came out and they were big and they were heavy and oh, yeah. you know, like that, but clunky uh, and right. Yeah, and the BlackBerry was always like so wide, and it was, uh, and I had them, and I loved them because I was I was exchanging emails. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, I was doing that, and a lot of people weren't at the he time. He had a stylus. I had a little stylus. The Palm, I, the Palm yeah, the Trio, Palm. the Palm Trio. That uh -huh. was one of my last non Apple phones. Yeah. I think it then was the, my yeah. last. And Apple. then the Palm Seven came up. I had a little antenna. You had to get a little uh, card for the cellular thing. And I mean, it, it's so funny how bulky and. And how quickly we've come. Listen, you know, mankind, you know, with the you know, radio and listen, TV's been around since nineteen fifty ish, if you will, but we've come so far so fast of how quickly phones, communication, text, and now social media has just taken over the world just almost in a blink of an eye compared to, you know, how long man has been around. Right. And that's, you know, and that's a little bit of in our, in our deal is that we're trying to figure out in the, in the, in the coin business and then how to, how to put yourself out there, right? What technology you use, what vehicle do you attach yourself with to be able to get out to the to most amount of people and the people that are in your, you know, people that are going to come into your store, right? How do you, how do you align yourself with people like that? So that's all I was asking you when you made your pivot, when did it, when did it kind of come into where you were now building more of a brand, you're branding yourself? When did that, because and maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you were always doing that, but it seemed to be freaking pretty huge. Right I was now. always doing it, and I'll, and I'll tell you what what honestly what made me. There was a few pivotal points of of 
if you know creating this high tech Texan brand. Number one, you got to be very confident. Okay, you guys have no issue with that. I can see it. I mean, which is fine. Confidence is everything. I teach my three boys. I said, you need to be confident. You need to be shaking hands. You need to be networking always. And so I came up with this idea and I'm thinking, is nobody, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have anybody. I can't hire a PR company. There was no social media in 2000, 2001. You've got to get out there and you've got to meet. So, you know, you join a chamber of commerce or you, you know, take people to lunch and you just collect business cards back in the day. It, it's what you do. But if for the, those listeners maybe here in the Houston area, if you go back 20 years or so, you may want to remember what happened to me is when I was on Channel 2, there was, uh, it was the same time in 2000, 2001, 2002, that high-speed internet just came in, into it. it. used to be AOL, the dial-up and yeah, things yeah. like that, or yeah. EV1 here locally. All of a sudden, Time Warner was the cable company here, and they had this hot new thing called Roadrunner. Time Warner yeah. Roadrunner. It was the fast way to the internet. Yeah. <laughs> Time Warner, they started advertising on Channel 2, and I had this segment in, early in the morning show, and um, I was doing about three minutes of technology. Time Warner bought commercial time on channel two and they would run this commercial right after my little segment and they they did radio they did everything and they were looking at all the analytics and they said well god most of our signups are coming right after michael does his little technology shtick that so the time warner people now at this point this was time warner aol this was the world's largest communication company 2001 steve case owned the whole thing yep. so the local time warner people contact me and they said hey can we have a meeting? Can we talk? I'm like, are you kidding me? Absolutely. I mean, I was nobody. I mean, I was making like 50 bucks a week on television doing nothing. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. <laughs> and I met these people and they said, you're the only person who is, ta is talking about technology. You could do it in a fun way. Um, you make it understandable. Maybe we use you as a spokesperson. I said, let's roll. <laughs> so in 2002, 2003, they created a campaign with me. I was on TV commercials. I was on billboards. It was the high tech Texan. I mean, we shot these things. And they used their annual multi-million dollar campaign to brand me. Yeah. I mean, I was on, I was on, I was more ubiquitous than Mac, Mattress Mac. God love Mattress Mac, but I mean, I was sick of myself looking at this thing. <laughs> but they helped brand me. And th the point is, and I, I still tell this, when you're creating your own brand, try to partner, network, glom on with bigger brands than you, because that is going to make you larger. When I was hired by uh, Clear Channel, or now it's called iHeartRadio. You know, they wanted me, I mean, I was on TV all the time, and they were trying to, you know, have me do commercials for these kind of seedy nightclubs, you know, yeah. which, which, which were on, you know, Rock 101, which I, which I love. And I realized that it, it was easy money, but wait a minute, I'm trying to build, build something brand. over here. Yeah. There's nothing right. wrong with these seedy clubs. That's just not me. I need right. to build this demographic, and I, can, and I keep going. So yeah. what I work with now, I love meeting mom and pop, you know, people out of their house over the past 20 years and endorsing them. And they're trying to launch, kind of work with me because I'm a bigger brand. But even to this day, I'm still knocking on doors of HP, Sony, Dodge, GM, and Jeep because they're massive national brands. I want to continue to work with them because it makes me look bigger. So try <coughs> to align yourself with the proper people, the proper demographic you're trying to get to right. and then create some sort of partnerships. So guys, it, in, to the audience, so if you're if you are looking for a tidbit of how, how in the world does a coin shop podcast how do we how do we mix these two it, it's exactly what michael just said and that's you have to be out you have to step out there if you're going to be everybody has a guy right if i call you and say hey listen i, I need that raptor r mm -hmm. um i i can't get it through my guy oh i got a guy right yeah. oh i need some boots oh we got a guy yep. right oh i need to sell gold and silver oh i got a guy everyone has a guy for something right and my whole thing when we took us coins and jewelry over was to we wanted to be your guy for gold and silver and for watches and for jewelry and things like that, right? Because we we're not attached to the trappings of corporate right, BS, right. Yeah. right? We don't have affiliate marketing. We don't have all of these things that we have to stay, um, you know, we can be true to ourselves and we can be ourselves. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, kick rocks. Doesn't right. It doesn't really affect us either way. If we continue to take care of people and do the next right thing, people are going to take notice. They're going to tell their friends and we're going to get big. And once you get to a place where we felt, or I felt like we were plateauing, hence the, the coin shop podcast, right? Mm -hmm. And what do we do? You attach yourself to the stars, right? And that's attaching yourself with people who represent you, represent good values. So, when we do these, when we do these interviews and have these guys on who have built legacies for themselves and for the families moving forward, it's so that 
you can kind of understand what it takes to get to that next level. You and it's got to you. It starts with confidence. You got to be confident in yourself. If you're not confident, you cannot instill confidence in others, right? And if people are coming in, if you're the guy right. and you're not confident in being the guy, they're gonna know. Yeah, then you're not Real, the guy. You're definitely not the guy. Right. And I and I get on my guys, my co my my employees and my coworkers down there sometimes because if you come in and you bring me this, you know, Daytona. And let's just say, yeah. By the way, courtesy of U.S. Coins and Jewelry. <laughs> unbelievable selection. Always changing. <laughs> <laughs> Always changing. Katie Freeway, just near boss. Why don't you come in? Talk to my boys, Kenny and Matt. <laughs> yeah, Katie Freeway, not Katie. Katie but, Freeway, yeah. Yeah, we get that mixed up a lot. Um, <laughs> so um, back to what I was saying, it was... Well, Being the guy. Oh, so, right. so if you bring that watch in, you take it to one of my guys. One of my guys makes a phone call. <clears throat> Well, now you're calling another guy. Which mm -hmm. means you're not the guy. Yeah, which means you're not the guy, right? I mean, because if you're trying to sell me something and I'm calling another dealer, there's 10 or 15% getting lost and you are going to pay for and it. And I'm coming to you because you are the expert. That's I want the point. answer now. Don't get on the phone. Talk to me. And yeah. that's the deal. That so that's a lot of times, you know, some of the things I tell guys when they ask me, hey, how do y'all do X? And a lot of times it's you need to... A, you need to know your stuff. So don't be a pretender. If you don't know it, don't purport yourself to be the all-knowing because people are going to test you and they're going to oh, find out real quick that you're not the guy. Mm -hmm. Once they do that, once they lose confidence in you or faith, it's really hard to get it back. Can it be gotten back? Yes, 100%. Living proof of it. But is it something that is easy? Absolutely not. And if you bring in a watch to one of our guys and he doesn't have the answer and he's the watch guy, well, then you're not at the right place. You're not the right place. No. You're 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 losing ten to fifteen percent because now you've taken it to the middleman. And in order to be successful in business, in my opinion, you must be the guy. Yeah. You can make money not being the guy, but if sure. you want to be successful, you got to be the guy. Okay. You have to be the guy. So a lot of times when we do the when we do these and we have these guests on, a lot of people ask me, well, why did you have that guy on? Well. You need to listen because in order to have a business, you need to build a brand. And I'm talking to a guy who's built an amazing, you know, worldwide brand. And you started off just like everybody else. Yeah. And I'm going to extrapolate on that thing because I want to talk about your business specifically. We could bring it down here. When I, I've, I've come in here for years, but much more so in the past month or two. And right. I've got to know you guys much more so. The entire staff and just hang around just fine. If you want to build your brand and network and expand your business, and I'm sure well, uh, Russell Abaro was on your show recently. Yeah. Longtime friend, one of the most respected businessmen I've ever known. He had Rudy T on. Built, built a team like that. Here's one word when I talk to kids, when I talk to anybody. This is what you need to do. You need to over-deliver. Life is about over-delivering, okay? In my business, when I'm on radio, my job is, one of my many jobs is to do endorsements, all right? Some people in my position... They don't leave the studio. They just said, hey, give me some radio copy and let me do it. That doesn't work with me. I figured that out 20 years ago, okay? People want to, I, if I'm putting my name on something, I better know everything about that company because people are going to come up to me outside of radio because I do a lot of things outside of radio, whether I'm on stage or on TV. Hey, man, do you really shop at U.S. Coins and Jewelry? I mean, do you really have a Rolex? something like that. Not only do I show them, I then say, let me give you the name and the number right now for Kenny and Matt. By the way, when you go there, I want you to see if maybe they'll take you in the back. They show you how the operations work. My job is to not just say, oh, yeah, the guys are great, is to continue to sell and over-deliver, all right? So generally, most all endorsements, they say, okay, Michael, here, we're just going to give you a 30-second script and, and just talk about it. My job is to over-deliver, I, and I check in regularly. What's my goals? You didn't tell me, and I mean, a lot of my you know, partners, they said, hey, you didn't really need to do the social media, Instagram video. We just wanted your voice. Not the point. The point yeah. is, if I believe in you, you like that. Same thing. So I come in here, and I haven't been here in a while, and I know you're, you're expanding. You've, I mean, it's, it's, it's so vibrant in here, man. You got, you got so many things going on. You got great security guards, man. I, had, you know, I think I had to give every piece of my government to get in over here, which, <laughs> which is great and safe, which, number one, is great. You're, you're dealing in high value. high. Value, so, number one, I want to be safe. I, mean, I, could, I could start from when we walk in. I walk in and I see a lot of Texas history things. Yeah. I didn't know you guys said, I'm not high tech Texan. Yeah. I love Texas. There's just flag from, I don't know how many years ago. Then I see sports. I see all your sports members. And at this point I'm starting to salivate. 
So what you're doing, you are expanding your brand yeah. and you are over living. And then you take me in the back, both of you guys, and you started showing me um, the uh, the cards, baseball cards that are certified. You showed me a baseball that was signed by Babe freaking Ruth. <laughs> I mean, but yeah. then I'm like, these guys are so legit. Now, I think I'm very, I'm in a lucky position because not the general public, anybody can't walk in here, go back and see you're safe. But it's my job as the mouthpiece to say, you're not going to believe it. I've, I see the back end. These guys are so legit. It is not even fun. So to over deliver in, in many cases, I don't know if you're so, like for Ro, you do Rolexes, you do so many other things. Your job is to know every single thing about that brand. Yep. Um, you're teaching me everything. So when in any business, and I'll tell you, Russell, when he gets the customer service is everything right now. Oh. I, I don't want to wait. Hey, if I'm bringing in 500 pounds of coins and I want them, want them to, the hell if I want to wait here for 30 minutes while someone is coming in. I mean, you've got an entire shop on this thing. So you're hitting it right yeah. on the customer service while you're expanding your brand because you're more than coins and jewelry. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're a lot of things. The customer, the service component is, it's it's not even close to number one. It, it's number one by a million miles. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how good you are. doesn't matter how smart you are, how clever you are. If you cannot take care of people and make them feel good about their experience, you have no shot at being successful. They're not going to come back. Absolutely. They're not. Yeah. Oh, I hate these guys. I mean, look at, and that's, and this is the bad part of technology. I mean, people can rant and rave on Twitter. Man, there's so much hate Twitter. I mean, I saw the other day, never fly American airlines. I mean, it was, I'm not defending that, but that was one flight. Guy had a bad experience. Like never, like, Never, hey, come never, on, man. Like, I need you know, to get from point A to B. I mean, why was why is this guy going nuts? Going never fly, you know, this airline. It right. was listen. It could have been a billion reasons. It was. One, I guarantee you, this dude took a return flight home on American Airlines. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, but that's the problem. It's it, it is the kind of the downside of technology because we, the general public, now. I mean, it used to it used to have a had to have a bachelor of journalism degree to get on TV or on radio to write. Mm. Now anybody can give out their opinion and now they're all influencers and they don't know anything. So you have to take all this stuff with a grain of salt and yeah. go to the resources um, who are, who are too trustworthy people. And that's what I wanted to do. I try to make a trustworthy brand. You absolutely have a trustworthy brand because the one time, God forbid, and I don't want to throw it out there in the universe, but if you screw somebody around, your name is mud. My name is mud. Everybody's name is mud. Yeah. That is why you over deliver. Yeah. There's, there's too much money to be made to do it in a, in a wrong way. I mean, we make so much, we make so many good connections by just taking care of people. You know, it's just, it's simple. It's not like a real crazy formula. Uh, It's just take care of people, have good products at a good price and smile. (laughs) <laughs> right. It's so be, sad that be people, grateful. And, and business owners that um, they don't they don't see that right nowadays. It's just you know this world is crazy. We do, do we do move at a fast pace. Well, it's if you break greed down, and profits though. Right? Yeah, which is yeah. true. And yeah. I understand the price of everything without a doubt. But damn, can't you have a smile? Yeah. It's, it doesn't right. cost anything to shake your hand, have a smile, slap somebody in the back. Yeah. Just cause, hey man, appreciate it. Even just, if it doesn't work, you know, like yeah. a lot of times, like if like we pride ourselves on our on our Google reviews, right? Because it's an unbiased. Um, free, you know, form where you're able, the customer basically has the platform to be able to credit you or discredit you. You can respond, but you can't take down. So if something is a lot of times we've, I will say probably 90% of our one star reviews, and I hate to talk about the negative, but we had, they're there. So we'll talk about mm-hmm. them, but it's because people were not educated coming in prior to, they didn't like the education that we were going to provide them or a lot of times, and I'll just say it plainly, is that they didn't have what they thought they had. Right. Right. And then, it's, and who's the asshole? It's us. Yep. Right. And that's where a lot of our one stars come from. And, you know, honestly, I kind of feel for them a little bit because it does suck. You know, it sucks to, to, to think that you've got something amazing and then you, you know, you're so pumped up and amped up about it. And then you come and bring it to the guy and he's, you know, I appreciate you bringing it to us, but it's just not x or not worth x and they're upset and instead of saying hey yeah you know i looked up the wrong thing or i thought it's it's your fault but if it was my fault i would be trying to keep the product i'm not giving it back to you telling you that it's not worth a right. lot right and a lot of times that's where you know people have gotten upset in the past and it's a shame that it's a shame that people judge you without even calling you so that's why i tell my guys i'm like you have to at least at minimum smile right right just if you can't take care of somebody or give them the satisfaction that they preordained thought they were already going to get, then damn it, at least give them a smile, give them a pat and say, Hey, if there's anything else I can do to help you along the lines, or if there's something else that pops up, give me a call, be available. Here's what a, the difference between a successful business person and a non-successful. You got one star Google reviews. Okay. Hey, everybody's going to get them. Yeah. Some of that, someone's going to have experiences. Inevitable. 
you, as the business owners, you read them. Oh. And then you correct the issue. Every day. And then you make sure to your employees, we are not going to do this again. Okay? You take it, you know, take it for its face value. Some people are like, ah, I'm just going to delete it. Ah, screw it. No, no. no. You read it. No. What was the issue? Yeah. Was it really your fault? Was it really their fault? But going forward, I duly noted this as the business owner, and we're going to change this. And that yeah. is what a smart business owner needs to continue you. to do. Nine times out of ten, one star, whether they're they're grant they're they're warranted or not, we have a part in it. Yeah, yeah, we have a part in it. Yeah, and it takes it takes a, a person that's okay with themselves to actually be able to to admit that. You know, I can't get some of my guys uh, we, now. They now they're they're bought in, but before it was like blasphemy that I was upset at them. You're like, well, right. no, but I'm telling you, I didn't do anything wrong. It's not the point. The point is you had a part in this negative, you know, action. Like somehow, some way you did not let them leave with a positive feeling. Right? Yeah, they were so, upset. Yeah, you had a part. So let's yeah. break it down. Let's figure out what these common denominators are and let's fix them. You know, I don't want to just look at someone's, oh, we only look at five stars. Right. No, F that. No, we look mm -hmm. at everything because I'm never going to get better if I'm not looking at the negative. I have to be able to fix that. To build a business, I think the one-star reviews are more important than the five-star yeah. reviews. It's the only way Do to learn. Understand? If they're genuine, right. 100%. Yeah. Exactly. Like if that. they're genuine, 100%, yeah. there's, yeah. No, there's nothing better for somebody mm -hmm. to tell you, hey, listen, you know what? You think your mm -hmm. shit doesn't stink, it does. Yeah. And y'all need to clean X yeah. up. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for letting me know yeah. we're on it. And it, you right. know what? One of the one of the best scenarios, you know, obviously long time Houstonian uh, over here. Uh, you ever go to Lupe Tortilla? Of course. Right. Lupe Tortilla was famous for this, that 20 years ago, you know, there was a long wait and like that, but in the, uh, in the waiting room, they would have letters from customers, written letters, and they were all bad. <laughs> Chicken Lupe sucks. You're the worst. <laughs> and it's in the front of, of Lupe the, Tortilla. Yeah. It's there for their own motivation. Like, yeah. I love that. And the fact is, I still remember this 20 plus years ago. It's like they have the bad reviews posted right yeah. there. And it's, you can laugh about it, but dang it. And every time, uh, every one of their employees walks in, they see it and they know what not to do. I mean, it's just look at it that way. I mean, sometimes the, the criticism is you take it to make things, processes better in the end. Yeah. Somebody sent me a message recently. I'm going to share this. I, I wasn't going to share this publicly, but I'm going to do it just because I think it fits in well with this. But um, someone sent me a message privately and um, had some comments about one of the videos that we had produced. And I went back to look at, a few things that they had mentioned and I saw where I think maybe they were probably right. So um, I took the video down because I wasn't happy with its overall message, I guess, you know, I didn't look at it the way that they kind of told me about it in, at first. But once I looked at it again, I'm like, you know what? This person's right. And I don't even know who this person is. It was random. It was like a message like a, um, on my uh, Instagram. And I don't, it, you know, they've got a tag name, but I don't know who they are. Right. right. And um, so some unnamed person said something to me that resonated, that made sense. I mean, I don't know who this person is, but I took the time to look back, to look at it and say, hey, if I look, if I reflect it in a certain way, I want to make sure that I, if I, I want to correct it. And when I looked at it, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I guess I could probably see that. So I deleted the video. Mm -hmm. You know, I made it private until I can address it. And we're going to probably do some, some, we'll probably redo it. Mm -hmm. But you know, running a business is tough, right? It's not, it's not easy. You know, we've nope. got freaking, I don't know how many employees. We got a lot of employees. We got a lot of yeah. people running around. We got a lot of moving parts. We have a lot of businesses we're building within our business right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're doing a lot of, we're, you know, there's a lot going on, right? And it's tough to delegate every time, you know, everything that goes on, right? It's really, really tough. Um, and we're not stopping. That's the deal. A lot of like, well, let's take a reset here and let's really, no, nah, F that. Foot on the gas. There's no time. No, nah, foot on okay. the gas. We're running. If you don't like it, jump out the car. We're, we're moving forward, right? And neg nothing negative, no one star, no this. This is ever going to take it take us down. But man, we have to look at it and we have to be honest with ourselves and see, is there a place where we can be, where we can correct something? And a lot of times it's accurate. You know, there are some times it's off, you know, right. they're off base and they're crazy. Right? Yeah. You're always going to learn something from that bad review. You're going to take you, something good well, something, something that's bad and you can turn it into something that you can work on and, and make it good that it's not ever going to happen again. And yeah, I mean, we, we, a couple of times we've got some bad reviews where someone was greeting someone and they sat down they're sitting down and you know, it's just a bad, 
it's a bad start to be taken care yeah, of. Yeah, somebody stuff. was waiting in line, right? You know, yeah. and then another person gets taken in, and they don't realize that. Well, we have certain people to do certain jobs. So if they have a coin collection that looks like it's modern, then we have a, a few buyers that do that. And they're specifically for that. And right. it's to the customer's benefit because they're going to get paid more money because they're going to the this expert. Is, they're going to the specialist. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, well, I was here before that person. Yeah, but ma'am, this person sells peanuts and this guy mm -hmm. sells hot dogs. Like it, you have to be able to wait for the right. And right. again, and how do you, and, and then again, how do you fix that? It's communication, baby. Mm -hmm. it's communication, baby. Yeah, just let say, them hey, know we know you're there. You're gonna either wait for right. Nick or Anthony. They're 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 specifically the purchasers for this these types of products. As soon as one of them frees up, we'll take care of you. Yeah. Let me get you a water, snack, anything. Oh, you're good. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now you're on to the next person. If you yeah. just explain that beforehand. Oh, it's perfect. And my guys are like, well, you know, um, yeah. you know, I didn't I I told her to wait a minute. I'm like, well, number one, you don't you don't tell <laughs> you don't anybody tell anything. Yeah. You ask them to politely wait, and right. then you ask them if there's anything you can do. And then it's, hey, this person is going to take care of you as soon as this person's finished. Thank you very much. If there's anything, your yeah. questions in the middle of time, please ask me. I'm I'm Roman, right? And that just that just takes a, so much of the problem out of it. But believe it or not, we would have to like argue with our with our buyers to communicate the right way because they, in their own brain, they were justifying their actions. I'm like, guys, you guys are sound crazy right now. <laughs> you got no, yeah. it's, it's 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 listening to your employees. Do you also said something a few minutes ago, and I think I, I don't want people to kind of gloss over about what you're doing over here. You said you got your foot on the gas. You're changing. You got things that obviously you can't even talk about right now yeah. of, of what you're doing. Of course. And you know what you're doing? And it, let's go back to the, you did, you had no clue what a podcast was when you, were, you know, started this, you know, the U.S. Coins and Joe's years ago. You got to keep evolving. You got to keep changing. Okay. You don't know if it's going to work. Yeah. It could be a failure. Hmm. The fact is you've got to keep your pulse on what is new, what is neat. And, you know, we can call it the technology. We call it customer service. We can call it, you know, whatever, but you keep doing it. And this is, you go in hindsight, this is, you know, newspapers back in the day. Newspapers really didn't see the advent of internet before they really got them. Newspapers are, you know, God love them, they're pretty much dead. A lot of the printing, <laughs> yeah. you have to, you know. Who'd, the, who'd, the, who'd have thought? Yeah, the cable industry slowly dying because they're cutting the cord. Now they're streaming and now they're fighting and now everybody's got, it's just every industry, you've got to keep thinking ahead. And you guys, you are young and you are energetic and you now are running the business. I know your dad's very much still involved too, but you're seeing now here we're in the 21st century, you know, where are you going to be in the next, not only five, but 10 years from right now? Yes, yeah. you got the customer service, but you know, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you're guessing what the gold and silver market is going to do like that, but you know, you've got so much cool sports things. I mean, sports memorabilia continues to increase in value, you know, with obviously, because all we do is we're watching our heroes and you know, that may yeah. be your entire business in 10 years. I mean, you don't know. You've got to keep, put your cards or, in, right. in, in these little slots can't and get just comfortable. figure out what's going on. You can't, but you got to keep that foot on the gas. All gas, no brakes, as we say. At yeah, UT. <laughs> all gas, no brakes. And, you know, you stay stay comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right, you know? yeah. You just have to learn mm -hmm. how to be comfortable being mm -hmm. uncomfortable because if you're not uncomfortable, in my opinion, you're not moving forward, right? Keep you're schwitzing. Not, keep schwitzing. You got to keep sweating, baby. It's all, that's what it is, right. <laughs> so where did you, where do you get the energy to do this every <laughs> single day? No, I mean, I'm serious. Like, I mean, because look, I at 40, I started to feel... You know, like I was like losing some energy, kind of going downhill a bit, you know, kind of wasn't in shape like I wanted to be. So I had to start adding some things to my routine, you know, mm -hmm. trying to change my diet, try to go to the gym a little bit more. But I still find myself around six, seven o'clock, like Peter now, but you're out fucking every night. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> See, uh, we can say that on a podcast. I think yeah. cannot say it on my radio show. Yeah, we got this. We got this thing called the, the FCC. We can't do it. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, but, yeah, that guy's blacklisted. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but how do you keep like? I mean, because you're burning, man. Like, give me, give us some. Uh, you know what? I I may have to go credit. Maybe it's my parents. It's it's the it's a zest for life. I chose something that I want to do in life that I wanted to do. Um, I can never. Be, I'm going to go back. I'm not ragging on lawyers, doctors, or anything. They're very successful. They're good. I don't have the patience for it. I'll tell you, listen, I'm going to give out some of my HIPAA right now. I have ADHD. And what I do, if I did not have ADHD, I couldn't do it. I'm an air traffic controller. Right? When you're doing, when you're on a live radio show, you've got a producer in your ear. You've got emails coming in. You're looking at the time. You're looking at the clock. You've got, I mean, like that. And then all of a sudden I got to make it because I got to go do a TV taping. Like that. I'm so, that that's fine. But it's, I have a motto. I have, it, just, my motto is life is short have fun. See, yeah. this may be, I don't think it's weird or scary or sad, but we are going to all die one day. Would you just effing have fun? Have right. fun in life. Yeah. Okay. And that's fine. 
you should wake up every day and you should just be smiling and happy like that. I don't have any time for haters in my life. And, yeah. and a lot of people tolerate it. I don't tolerate it. And I'm lucky that I do not. I'm lucky. I don't have a nine to five job, even though I probably work many more hours than nine to five every single day. Oh, I'm always on. And you're, you're always on, on too. I know, but you're always on But I have on the too. energy. <laughs> you have, you have the other thing you talk, you talk about, because both you guys are great. I mean, you're much younger than I am, but you're in physical shape. I was probably maybe when I was 25 or 26, I, I wasn't really a sports guy, but I started running. One of my, uh, my boss, when I was 25 or 26, he was a runner and he did 10Ks. And I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm going to do a 10K. When anyway, he got me to do it, I almost threw up after I ran my first mile <laughs> and then I did a 10 K and then I moved to Houston 1995 and I'm thinking I, we just had our first kid it's 1995 I'm in a new place I'm like what other challenge I trained for the Houston marathon so I've now done 10 marathons I still run this is my 30th year of running I probably run six days a week do something to keep in shape and you know what it Gotta also keeps it. your not only your mind but I like to think yeah. it keeps you looking young Got to do yeah, it. I'll, I'll, thank, I'll credit my parents with, you know. No, you look it, great, man. It, it's my hair. I'm not saying, but it's my, it's my hair. <laughs> no, I'm saying it. You look great. Moisturize your face, but, and <laughs> never have I had a sip of coffee in my entire life. It's oh, not really? Co- nope. I drink iced tea. I drink Coke Zero. It's, 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 I don't know. It's, I'm not ragging on coffee because wow. I'd love to promote Juan Valdez if he comes in to ask me for endorsement money, but I just don't, I don't know. It's, it's the coffee. Because number <laughs> one, Valdez. could you imagine me on coffee? That's that's it. Can you imagine me drinking coffee? No, you really I'm can't. I'm having a hard time imagining you right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, but I tell you what, when I when I crawl into bed, I pass out like I, I but then, then, I, then I pop up again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And then What's the final that? thing, it's it's my, my, my last line about this is I keep, I keep joking. Obviously, I went to UT back in the 80s, and you know, could have gone on, but it is, I think my energy is right now, and I'm serious, it's from all the drugs I did not do in my life in college. <laughs> my only drug is, is caffeine, which is a drug, an occasional cigar, and that is it. It's life. I enjoy life, and yeah. I think that comes across in personality, over-delivering, and, and your energy. Without it, you have to have energy. Got to have energy, man. Yeah, you're right. Those things they they help, right? You gotta you gotta get moving. You gotta get out. You gotta freaking do something, right? Do not be sedentary. You know, people. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, you're listening to this podcast while you're running right now, <laughs> <laughs> on the treadmill or something. That's awesome. <laughs> so, what about us? So, any, oh shit! I almost knocked my freaking headphones off. 